Hello, I'm Adam. And I'm Adrian. And welcome to Cast from the Crypt. Adrian, did, did you enjoy this movie? I hate you. Why do you hate me? <laughs> you suggested this movie. I, well, you hyped it up, I think. What do you mean I hyped I go, it up? <laughs> I have to go back. I have to go back and listen to our I Frankenstein episode because during the movie, for whatever reason, I was mad at you. <laughs> for what? As though you had suggested it. But if I truly suggested it, then I've got some. some Dude, it's literally in the I've recording. I've got some reflection. It ends with you <laughs> saying we should do Helsing next time. So somehow, somehow, we found a movie, in my opinion. And I'll open up the episode with this. We found a movie even worse than one of the worst movies I've ever seen, which was I, Frankenstein. Wow, that's quite the I will say this. I will say this. Not Hugh Jackman's worst movie, because he's still in The Greatest Showman. He's still in The Greatest Showman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not his worst movie, but Jesus Christ. 2004's Van Helsing. Yes. Off the top, so I'm going to have to tell you. To avoid this one. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> I, I, I'll I probably have to agree with that. With I, Frankenstein, like, I at least was able to have... I think I had more fun with it. Like, okay, you could probably... I think the problem was I watched this one completely Stone Cold Sober, and that's not the way to go. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Um, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> I don't know, man. I So... I watched a scene whenever we had just decided that this was the right movie to cover. Um, I watched some clips on YouTube from the movie. And in the comments, in the comments, in fact, let me read you some of these. Some of these gems. As a treat for the, <laughs> as a treat for the podcast. Hold on. But you're going to have to make it seem like I had them ready because. So I just want to share with you some of the comments from what seems to be a very dedicated fan base <laughs> to this movie. Um, so I was excited going into it because I had just read these comments of these very loyal fans. So here's, here's one. Such an underrated gem. I feel sad for the people who saw the ratings and thought it was bad. The atmosphere, set design, costume design, visual effects, character designs, and music are absolutely phenomenal. I hope the whole team with the director will get together and continue the story. Uh, um, you are wait, I'm sorry. lying to yourself if you think <laughs> the visual design in this movie. Anything here's, better here's than another, another. Sorry. Here's another. Please. The way those vampires transform is ten times better than any vampire movies I've ever seen. Oh, no. Here's another. Here's another. This movie is one of those that never gets old and only gets better. <laughs> this movie got old I can as go I was on. watching it. I can go on. Most of the comments, the gist is a lot of people. <laughs> You're right, it did get old as we watched it. Um, the gist of the comments is many people feel like this movie is underrated. And uh, I don't know what this movie has on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if you know that off the uh, top of your head. It's a 24%. It's overrated, yeah, frankly. Yeah, uh, yeah. This movie, if I Frankenstein was like an 8. It was a 5. Excuse me, a 5? This movie is a 1 or 2. I This movie is, first of all, let me just name these things before we get too far into it. This movie has some of the worst visual effects I've seen, excuse me, in a 2000s movie, maybe ever. And with the budget that it had, which was like 160 to 170 million dollars, it should have been better. I can name a multitude of movies that came out in 03, 04, 05 that look way better for less money, but I won't because you got to believe me on this one. It's it looks horrible, grotesquely horrible um, at times. Um, so the effects are are horrible. The acting is really not good. Now, Hugh Jackman, some people love him, some people hate him. I find him to be pretty mediocre. I don't know about you. Yeah. Um, in basically everything, I find him to be pretty mediocre. Um, and overall, 
the, the, I think the biggest sin in this movie is the runtime is over two hours, which is just ridiculous and asinine for a movie of this quality. Yeah, it should have been an hour and a half and honestly could have been an hour and ten. Uh, but they decided to have this this incredibly complex and poorly pieced together plot. Oh, God. And I would say it was just overly ambitious, but that's complimenting it too much. I don't know what this movie thought it was going to be, but it missed the mark entirely. It is really bad. That's my pitch going into this thing. So there are a few things that contribute to the reception of this movie, I think. The biggest one being, okay, I, Frankenstein, terrible movie about sexy Aaron Eckhart. You know, he's the main guy. He's what's drawing people in. And here we have Hugh Jackman doing that. And I think Hugh Jackman's just more popular. Like you were saying, people people think Hugh Jackman is some. And I will give Hugh Jackman nothing. I think he's so mediocre. I think he's the most, probably the most overrated actor in the business. Uh, so I'll give him nothing. He makes Ladies terrible and gents, movies. this is the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This okay. movie ain't it. I feel like he's never it. He's in so many bad movies. And the good movies he's in are not good because of him. <laughs> there, there was a, there's a character in this movie that he's barely in it. He's the brother of Kate Beckinsale's character. Uh, her name is Anna. And he probably could have been just as good of a lead <laughs> as Hugh Jackman in this movie. To give you an idea of Hugh Jackman's performance. You just needed a piece of meat. Like, that really is... You need a piece of meat to throw <laughs> up in that shop window, get people to come in, you know? That's the whole point. God. Um, <sighs> yeah, I think you're right. There are things I will give this movie over... I Frankenstein, the design of the critters, <laughs> the monsters, I think are more creative in this movie than I Frankenstein, for sure. All right. Uh, Fair enough. You know, Frankenstein's monster is a character here. I Frankenstein is, of course, about Frankenstein's monster. And this movie, he is actually a monster. He feels like Frankenstein's monster, you know? It's not a dumb, sexy man. With some scarring. <laughs> he looks like he's made of corpses. Uh, Van Helsing's got, you know, really dumb, like, kind of stereotypical, you know, like, leather, edgy, whatever. Dumb, but whatever. Okay. There's so, so many similarities to I, Frankenstein. Like, this movie really is that movie. Um, First of all. <laughs> Wait, exp expand upon that. Okay, they fall it falls into a lot of the things wrong with this movie are the same things wrong with I Frankenstein. Uh such as like the plot pretty much making no sense and being dumb and just like as if they're making it up as they go along. Uh I like I said with I Frankenstein, this movie was riding a similar wave. I Frank I Frankenstein came out twenty fourteen. So it was trying to ride that, like, post-Twilight wave of sexy monsters. This movie came out in 2004. It, around this time, there were a lot of, like, crappy, cool fighting monsters. The year before this, in 2003, Underworld came out, starring Kate Beckinsale. So, of course, this movie's really trying to hit that market. Like, if you are a fan of Underworld, if you, if you like this movie, you also like Underworld. Like, that's a guarantee. Oh, yeah. Sum it up, it's a lazy cash grab attempt to grab that same appeal. It's just like not trying to make a movie. It's just trying to appeal to a market that they think is new and lucrative. And that's why this movie is crappy. Like at its core, at its emotional, spiritual foundation. But um, another big thing. So what did I say about the villain in I, Frankenstein? He was just some gross old man. He wasn't, like, cool or intimidating or sexy. Same thing here. Okay, here oh they try to do it God. better. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting into this Dude, now. So I completely agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I, this is the one thing I couldn't stop thinking about. Richard Roxburgh, Burr, Bro, Berg, I'm sorry. Richard Roxburgh, I'll call him, plays Count Dracula in this movie. 
of course, because of course it's Dracula. And that's the main antagonist. Van Helsing has to kill Dracula, of course, it's, you know. And he, it is the worst Dracula I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the most, this unintimidating, he looks like Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> like, he looks exactly like, he's dressed, he acts, he looks like Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau would have been more fun to watch. Tommy Wiseau would have been infinitely more fun to watch, too, yeah. It could have been, should have been Tommy Wiseau. Might as well have been. He's, like, it's supposed to take place in, like, I guess when Dracula takes place, so, like, the end of the 1800s, like, what was that, like, 1892, I think that book came out in 97 or something. So you expect maybe some loosely period clothing or theme or look to this movie uh but dracula is wearing like a really crappy uh black parade cosplay basically <laughs> uh. it's it's just like sequins on a shirt and he has like one earring and a ponytail <laughs> yeah i've met him on sixth street in austin <laughs> yeah 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 i've met that guy <laughs> Yeah, he was like, high at Voodoo Donuts. Yeah, exactly. No, this dude, I've never seen this man in anything else. <laughs> and literally, the, the the design that that one YouTube comment really apparently <laughs> loved for this character was abhorrent. <laughs> you know, it, in the book, which which, you know, I hate to even mention the books when we're talking about movies like I Frankenstein or Van Helsing. But these movies describe themselves as love letters to the novels, as well as the, uh, you know, it, uh, it's an homage to the universal horror movie monsters. And there is none of those things, the movies, or the, I should say the classic monster movies or the uh, the literature in any of this. And what what's really rough, I think, about this movie is you don't have a protagonist that you care about unless you're a huge, huge Ackerman fan. Um, but if you're me, you don't have a protagonist you care about. And then you don't have an antagonist you care about. So you're right. In that regard, it's the exact same problem that we saw in I, Frankenstein. Just not to mention that... It's not even that the character is not likable. It's that Dracula is not scary, not interesting to look at. It is a lazy, hastily put together design. Um, I mean, I cringe at the thought of that ever being approved by anyone. Someone I, thought I that just... that was suave and sexy. Who? Tommy Who? Wiseau? I don't know how you watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you watch that. And think that that is a sound design for really what is a, if not the most iconic horror character of all time. That's your design? Yeah. I mean, I almost wish that we had a video element to our podcast because like. If we do, I'll throw a picture up. If I can do oh that. Oh my God. It's, it's, oh my God. yeah, it, it, this is easily the worst Dracula I've ever seen design wise. Like literally if you went to that party city, got that classic Bella Lugosi cape and all that, it would have been better. You could have just gone classic Dracula. Yep. This is it's so underwhelming. I don't know if you've seen any of the promotional material for this movie, but it's almost entirely just pictures of Hugh Jackman looking cool. Like that's all it is. There's not a single piece of promotional material that shows Dracula. And in a story where the main antagonist is Dracula, about Dracula, I would slap Dracula front and center. It's freaking Dracula, you know? Like, right. that name has weight. Hugh Jackman is just sexy. He's nothing, you know? And like you were saying in the book, he's supposed to be suave and, like, enthrall, like, literally enthrallingly charming. And, like, this man has none of that. I guess they were trying to do that. They were trying to make him sexy in 2004, but damn, he look, he's just dumb. Like, that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> it's just stupid. Uh, let me tell you the truth. I mean, I, I have goosebumps thinking about how we're going to have to talk about this plot. Because 
I do not know what the hell was going on at any given point in this movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, just like at Frankenstein. Um, okay, we can get uh, into it. This is far worse, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I think they're really cut from the same cloth. Like, ah, uh, well, look with I Frankenstein. I can recall, at the very least, some basic motivations. Right, the uh, you know uh, Adam. The character that you've already likely forgotten. Uh, no, maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're right. It started yeah. to to reach for for memories. It's and... okay. The plot is the least important part of this movie and that movie. So, you know, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. It basically we've got a similar spin on these classic characters right um in a way this movie is is maybe more ambitious in trying to bring in outside elements i mean with i frankenstein you had a lot of biblical elements that were being kind of interwoven into the story but here they're they're clearly um once again trying to create a tribute to the universal monster universe so we are in the late, late 19th century, of course, in Transylvania. And what's interesting about the beginning of this movie is that they establish that Dr. Victor Frankenstein is working on Frankenstein's monster, his, his great creation here in Transylvania. And he is joined by, of course, Igor, but also Count Dracula. Now, <laughs> why Dracula is there... Uh, that is a part that I never truly understood. Um, but what really matters and what kind of sets the story in motion in theory is that Dracula murders Frankenstein just as this massive mob of Transylvanians starts to storm the, ca uh, the castle. And essentially that's the beginning of the movie. Frankenstein, the, the Frankenstein's creature escapes. He takes his creator's body with him. Uh, and then they establish that a year later, Ben Helsing is doing his thing in Paris. What's confusing is why Van Helsing is wrapped up in all of this. That's where they don't really, the, the, the opening of this movie already kind of loses some points. Is that the connection between the events in the cold open and Van Helsing, the titular character are super muddy from the jump. I thought the He's like exact... a bounty hunter? Yeah, he hunts monsters. He's a monster hunter, you know. But I thought the exact same thing, because it ends with... First of all, it's in black and white, which is, you know, I guess it's fun. That could have worked, uh, because it's in the past. That's how you know it's a flashback, and it's like an old one of these old movies they're trying to pay homage to. Flash forward one year later. First of all, one year later that's i feel like that's not much time <laughs> a year um they go to frankenstein's castle later in the movie and it's like abandoned destroyed and there's like cobwebs lining everything but it's been one year <laughs> and they act like it's it's like some ancient ruin but whatever uh and then they flash forward it says one year later and we are watching van helsing hunt uh, Dr. Jekyll slash Mr. Hyde. And that has zero connection to what we just saw. The point of it is to just have a fun action scene to look at as you fight, as you watch Van Helsing fight this big creature that they set up. Uh, and, and it's just introduced the character and introduced the fact that he's a monster hunter. But it's already, we're, you know, five minutes into the movie and it's veered way off completely left the plot and then they try to rope van helsing into the plot and like you said he still doesn't like have much invested in the plot like you were saying like he's really not important if he wasn't in the movie uh kate beckinsale's character could probably do everything without him <laughs> like the movie would progress the same yeah and you brought her up but i was immediately <laughs> completely thrown by just how airbrushed Kate Beckinsale is in this movie. 
Like her poor pores must have been so clogged. Yeah. During shooting because she is like so airbrushed. Her skin looks saturated. And it takes you out of it because it's incredibly noticeable. It's not even a nitpick. I, I'm telling you, it, you noticed, right? Yeah, it's it's like um Mila Jovovich. It's uh, like Mila Mila, Jovovich Mila, yeah. in the Resident Evil movies. Like it's that airbrushed. It's bad. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's pretty um obscene <laughs> um and for like a period movie it makes no sense it kind of takes you out of it but who am i to say it, literally you're taken out of the movie uh in the first battle with mr hyde yeah because they clearly had to put the whole scene in absolute darkness because the cg is so bad and i'm not even convinced i actually think going back to the black and white intro of the film I'm not entirely convinced that that was done as a director's choice. I think they said, oh, it'll work out because it's a flashback and we'll do black and white. But really, black and white would really help us finish this opening um, because of all the CG that's in it. It'll help kind of mask how bad the visuals look. That's what I think happened. Yeah, I... This is another similarity to I, Frankenstein. It's horrible CGI. Like, just so glaringly terrible. And it's throughout the movie, and they, like, it is in your face. Like, they, it is right there, the center of the camera. And they do this thing where, like, you know, the werewolves look terrible in CGI, so they just have them move a lot. And it's like, okay, well, now it looks terrible, and I can't see what's happening. That's what right. a lot of these fights are. That a lot of that in this first scene, um, really horrible. <laughs> and that's why I'm amazed by people pretending the visuals of this movie are <laughs> anything to write home about. No, they're not even good for the time period. No, they're they're pretty piss poor, and I just. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how anybody could watch this movie. Again, not to shame people. I'm not gonna. Y- you know what? I I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Um, but I love bad movies. I really do. You and I both. Of course, we love bad movies. But this is this is just not a lovable film. Uh, it looks no, I... and feels like true garbage yeah it just half-hearted just kind of soulless i did have a lot more fun watching i frankenstein like i keep saying um i did too it was directed by steven summers this movie steven summers who also did the mummy franchise so once again it's it's that same feel that same like I don't know, kind of mythical horror movie, but it's an action with the sexy protagonist. Really dumb, but... Oh, this was the director of The Mummy. Yeah, yeah, so it's that same time period. Uh, This Uh. movie just feels so much... I don't know, I'm not going to pretend The Mummy movies are good. (laughs) Oh, they're bad, in my opinion. Yeah, I think they're... they're Yeah, they're not good at all. Uh, But it just feels a little more half-hearted, this movie. Which surprised me, because at the end of the movie, do you remember, did you see the credits? No. It, like, I the... turned this off as quick as I could. <laughs> at the uh, ending, like, the credits roll, and, like, one of the first things you see is directed by Steven Summers, and then it says, in memory of my dad. Oh, I did see that. And I was that like, man Whoa. is rolling in his grave. <laughs> yeah, <I> was... <laughs> you must I'm have sorry, hated Steven, your dad, but... dude. Yeah, <laughs> Steven, there's something there, my brother, because... You dedicated this thing to your father? <laughs> I know. Uh, I assume Go, go yeah. lay a bouquet on his grave or something. Cause uh, yeah. This is not the thing. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it feels so soulless and kind of like... Dis- <laughs> like, everybody who was in it was disinterested with it. And so I was, like, amazed to see uh, such an emotional tribute put into the movie. Yeah. You're right, though. I've seen those Mummy movies, and they are similarly... Also, homages to the classic horror monster um, films. And uh, they're not very good either, but they do feel 
like they have a lot more heart um, than this particular movie. This is more comparable to the... So I'd say those two movies, I was just crapping on them, but truly, I'd say the first two Mummy movies are mediocre popcorn flicks. Uh, and then you look at something like Scorpion King, which is in the same universe, and it is egregiously bad, right? Everybody knows how bad it is. Um, you know, I'm glad that Dwayne The Rock Johnson's career didn't tank after that movie. It probably should have, but um, it was it was one of those career-ruining movies. It was a really, really bad film. This, I find to be more similar to that movie uh, in quality, in... Well, actually, in quality. You know, it's it's just... I don't know who it's for. Um, I know that in theory it was this grandiose love letter, um, but it's far too long. It's poorly written. There's just nothing good about it. I, but I could see... I'm not this person, but I can see how there would be people who enjoy this movie in the same way I enjoyed watching I, Frankenstein, in that you go into it just knowing it's going to be trash, and then just rolling, just rolling on the floor because it's it's that bad, and you're enjoying it being terrible. Like, I really can enjoy a god-awful movie, and I feel like... I'm happy for you. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the fans <laughs> of this movie have to be able to do that as well. I, said, I don't think I can do that with this film, but I think people can, and I understand that, and I respect that. That's fair. That's fair. Again... You and I both like a lot of really bad movies. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I had a hard time watching this one, Adam. I had a really hard time watching this one. <laughs> uh, I did. I did. I was, I had to, I literally couldn't watch it in one sitting. It's like a, watching an animal be euthanized. I, <laughs> I watched <laughs> half of it. I watched half of it. Went to sleep. Woke up, had some coffee, and watched it. <laughs> to Took a shot it. of vodka. That sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched it. Finished. I watched it again. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So let's let's get into the critical reception. Uh, this movie did not do well critically, and it honestly didn't do super well in the box office. It made money, which I suppose is a success. Um, but I think the, the critic consensus kind of killed any momentum that it had going into the theaters. Um, some critics even comparing it to Battlefield Earth, which is largely considered one of the worst attempts at a summer blockbuster, maybe in movie history. I think it's rough. It is interesting that, like, this movie did make money. It made, I think, like, twice what it cost. So, yeah, okay, it was successful, but... But then a lot of that goes to the movie theaters, and... Yeah, yeah there's it... a lot there that doesn't really go back to the studio. Yeah, it for a movie that clearly wanted to be, like, a moneymaker, this movie was made with the purpose not of making a movie, but of with the purpose of making money. Like, this just was going to be a money blockbuster. Uh, that's the whole point of it, and it did not make... Um, probably as much as it had wanted to or hoped to, but it did make a decent amount of money back, and I literally think that's because people saw Hugh Jackman and were like, I'm going to go watch the Hugh Jackman movie. Yeah, that's that's probably exactly what they did. Um, what What is interesting to me about Stephen Summers, now knowing that he was involved in The Mummy, uh, and I've fact-checked myself just to make sure, but the Mummy, the 1999 film, nor its sequel, um, which came out in like 2001, they weren't that successful. They did fine. The first one was pretty much regarded as, as mediocre. You had a lot of people that loved it. Um, and the second one, as sequels usually tend to do, was was regarded as, as worse than the first. Um, and so I'm just... Kind of, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but I am surprised that there was yet another attempt at a movie of this kind by Stephen Summers after seeing that those two didn't quite do well. And he wrote and directed all three of these films. Um, but maybe, maybe they, 
maybe we're wrong. Maybe in calling it soulless, we actually it was actually maybe a labor of love because he tried to do something like this several times. You know what I'm saying? Well, he fell on his face. And one man does not a movie make, to be fair. No, one man does not a new movie make. Um, and Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale, for all of their star power, cannot save this film. Now, did you know that in 2012, so just, in fact, almost exactly 10 years ago, because it was May 2012, um, Universal wanted to reboot this movie? Okay. Okay. Not only... Did they want to reboot this movie? They wanted to make Tom Cruise the titular character. Oh, God. Here is what's crazy. Do you remember what other Universal franchise they revived and put Tom Cruise in the movie for? The Mummy. The Mummy. So they wow. went a completely different direction. Yeah. They I... went a completely uh, different direction with it. If and that, that movie did horribly, too. Yeah, if that speaks to the soullessness of the Mummy reboot, like... They didn't even care if it was the Mummy reboot or not. They just needed, once again, to make money off of a movie that was already half written. And and here's the truth of it, right? And I, I know that this is a podcast in which we review movies, but now we're going to talk about <laughs> other things. Um, here is the truth about these studios: is there are, I mean, us, we, you, and I, we love the classic monsters, right? Um, and I think there is a genuine market for this type of film, referring back to uh, Van Helsing 2004, right? Where there's these overlapping characters and we get Transylvania in all of its gothic glory. And, you know, I think a lot of us want this type of film. There is clearly a lot of love for the groundwork that was laid all those years ago. And really, other than monster squad which is also a bad movie but i love there hasn't been a solid homage to those films in a very long time in my opinion right some people do like the mummy and and, and this movie so more power to you but these th this studio universal in particular knows what the people want and consistently fail time and time again even uh, a movie that I think is okay and isn't that bad, The Invisible Man, went through production hell and um, ultimately became a completely different thing because of the bureaucracy and just the inability to produce by the studio. Um, so I don't know what's going on over there, but clearly they do not care truly about the viewer. It's 100% financially motivated and I'm just not convinced at this point that we'll get anything solid um, out of Universal I should specify anything um, that scratches the classic movie monster itch that so many of us have yeah um, this movie really does try it pretty much every character every villain every monster in this movie is just a stock character of those classic movie monsters and like you were saying in Monster Squad, like, that's perfect. That's what we want. That's what works about Monster Squad. But Monster Squad has heart, and this movie has Hugh Jackman, and those are not comparable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's briefly talk about the plot now, just because there's not much to talk about, if that's okay. <laughs> um, sure. Well, we, like we said, we're introduced to Van Helsing with this bizarre fight against Dr. Hyde. Um, he ends up killing Dr. Hyde because he is a giant evil monster. And once again, all right, another similarity to I, Frankenstein. Where do they fight? Notre Dame. And it's almost completely abandoned, the streets of Paris at night. <laughs> Just like I, Frankenstein. But uh, yeah, at the end of that, he kills uh, Dr. Hyde and... People get upset because Dr. Jekyll actually is a real human person as well, who's a nice guy, but he's dead. So he goes back to what we find out are his bosses, who he works for, the Vatican. He's in the service of the Catholic Church. They send him out to hunt monsters, basically. Um, 
and he that he's getting scolded because he pretty much did a terrible job. He botched it. And then they say, okay, well, here's your next assignment. Go kill Dracula. <laughs> and that's pretty much what he does. Uh, but before he leaves, he takes with him his sidekick, his comedy relief sidekick character, uh, whose name is Friar Carl. He's a friar who makes monster killing weapons basically and he serves no purpose in this movie he doesn't do a thing he is the comedy relief character and, and um does a pretty poor job and does a job. bad job at it too yeah yeah he's it really is kind of grating to see him like it really is just making the movie longer for context if i may just interject uh david wenham who is uh the guy we're talking about, who plays the friar, um, is not a bad actor. He well, is Faramir in Lord I of the Rings. I was going to say this, too. Yeah. Oh. What's another similarity between I, Frankenstein? Yeah. We've got Eowyn and I, Frankenstein, Faramir in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think he's good in those movies. And he's also in, for better or worse, he's in Pirates of the Caribbean. The Dead Men Tells No Tales. Well. Or, excuse me, Tell No Tales. Which is um, still a better movie than this. That's a good um, point. But he's not... Yeah, that, that character is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's there for this, like, basically gag that he's a friar and not a cardinal, and therefore he can sin. <laughs> it's like a lighthearted bit they keep doing. But I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Yeah. So, next scene, they're in Transylvania, basically. Uh, this is where we're introduced to Kate Beckinsale's character. Her name is Anna Valerius. Um, she is descended from a bloodline of Romanian nobility, and she is at war with the forces of darkness. Dracula has been hunting down her family, and they've fought him throughout history. And slowly, her dad has been killed, it's just her and her brother now, and every member of her family has been killed off, basically. She and her brother are the only ones left, and they have to get Dracula before Dracula gets them. Yawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, this... How do you feel about Kate Beckinsale? I don't have any evidence to suggest she's anything <laughs> no i i uh i feel the same way I, i'm not other than like underworld this movie and i don't know like maybe a few other things i know she's in maybe a couple of rom-coms that i've seen uh i don't have a strong opinion of her i, I haven't seen a lot of her work yeah is that i do i do think that most of the shortcomings uh in in regard to the acting in this movie are due to just how bad the writing is yeah i i will give her that i don't hate her after seeing this movie for sure yeah uh i hate yeah it's not really their fault (laughs) yeah i've seen more of his work and don't like much of it yeah i don't even i'll say it i don't even like him as wolverine there you go Ooh, hot takes yeah i don't care about the x-men movies so i me neither every time i am talking because i will talk trash about this man all the time because i really do not like him (laughs) we both do yeah i talk so much trash about him and every time i'm talking about trash or every time i'm talking about him someone always brings up wolverine and he's kind of just a generic superhero in the first few movies and then people will say okay what about logan he's good in logan um he had like what is it 15 20 years playing this character so i would hope after 20 years of playing a character you would be able to give one solid performance as that character so i'm not even going to give him that damn yeah sorry sorry no sorry <laughs> talk it talk it <laughs> uh no I, I i agree with you you know me we we we're part of the fan club uh welcome back to the i hate Hugh jackman podcast so in this movie they call her the 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 queen of the gypsies i think at some point 
And they talk her up. She's the talk of the town. I don't... You can't see, but I'm pulling my collar right now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so there's this thing in, like, these movies about, like, you know, Monster Hunter movies, whatever, that take place in, like, the 1800s. This sort of movie, these sort of movies, love to use, like, Slavic or Roma people as, like, the magic people. (laughs) And this movie clearly is no exception. No, not at all. Yeah, so she's a magic gypsy. I I don't think she, um, I looked it up. Kate Beckinsale is not Romanian. I didn't think she was. But no, she's English. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's, yeah, she's English. I found out her dad she is. is half Burmese, but other than that, English. Well, good for him. Uh, <laughs> it's still neither but, here nor there. Yeah, uh, you know, of course, this is a, a major trope within any of these movies that take place in Transylvania. You can't really avoid it because, well, I suppose you could avoid it, but Transylvania is, of course, a real place in Romania. Um, which I did not know until far too late in my life. Uh, that was really funny. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but, you know, I, I think that what's a little rough is that oftentimes the culture, which there is so much of in Eastern Europe, is reduced to vampire werewolf. Yeah, vampire you know? <laughs> werewolf and their magic. Yeah, it's even in the original book, um, there's like a subtext of kind of, xenophobia dracula's like he's from this strange country and there's he's you know feared as like this magic creature by the slavic people that live there and it's uh it's a little (laughs) it lives on in in the west too and in this movie for sure (laughs) yeah and it's yeah (laughs) yeah it's not good there are a bunch of angry eastern european slavic villagers in this movie you know, they don't know the ways of civilization. They, you know, it's very much like that. Yeah, it, it totally has that air to air air to it. And I don't know, you know, I, I'm such a sh- uh, sucker for these kinds of things. But even now, like playing Resident Evil Village, which is in a little Romanian village, and there are werewolves and such, and vampires. Uh, there's still a lot of that in it. So I don't know. I don't know how the genre can maybe move past that when doing these kinds of films. I hope we're not <laughs> alienating anybody that listens and has no idea what we're even talking about. Um, I think if you're going to die on the hill that is this movie, then die. <laughs> you're, right. you're, you're right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you want to continue with the plot i i suppose okay <laughs> um so we're introduced to anna valerius kate beckinsale's character and her brother velkin <laughs> and they're fighting a werewolf and they they really keep screwing it up like everything that can go wrong is going wrong and it ends with her brother shooting the werewolf but also getting tackled by him off a cliff into a ravine um, so we assume his brother, her brother's dead. She's the last of her line. Uh, she goes back to the village, and this is where she and Van Helsing meet. Uh, they're in the middle of town. They both get there, and three, what I thought were harpies initially, but they're bat women, attack the town. And it's, I thought they were harpies because they're you know winged women, but also it was in the middle of the freaking day you know and and they like keep doing this thing that like oh it was overcast but like really like the sun doesn't kill vampires if it's overcast (laughs) and i think in this movie you see the vampire women attack people more in the daytime than at night which is just sinful outside of the opening or excuse me the the first scene where we meet the vampire women they're pretty much in daylight <laughs> fairly consistently um, or indoors, which I guess is them sort of sticking to it. But um, I felt that they did not follow their own rules at all. By the time they establish these three characters um, who are 
all three the brides of dracula there is already so many moving parts and so many characters to keep track of that personally i disengaged entirely and um fun fact this scene is actually the very scene that i watched the clip of on youtube that people loved so much whereas i thought it was just a big sloppy cg mess um and i i mean i guess as far as the action scenes are concerned it might be the most um interesting and the best shot but it's not very good um nor is it compelling and these three characters doing these dialects <laughs> uh very much i want to suck your blood dialects that they're doing and uh it is hilarious unintentionally hilarious yeah they're probably some of the worst characters in this movie dracula of course has three brides it's like one of the one consistent things about him in his mini media portrayals uh in they get used in this movie a lot but he kind of just uses them as like minions like this is the first and i guess if you count the werewolf and the werewolf is the first of his minions we see but the werewolf's kind of mindless and we don't know it's from dracula uh his brides are clearly from him and like that's the first thing he sends out like he has werewolves and other creatures he could have used but he sends his wife out all, all three of his wives uh at the end of this scene first of all i you could if you took it you would die of alcohol poisoning if you took a shot every time one of the vampires nearly killed someone or nearly drank their blood there's so much like mouth open around the neck and then they don't do it for some reason there there's is a lot so of that. much of that <laughs> Uh, the scene ends with Van Helsing killing one of the vampires. And while he's doing that, the other two are about to drink all of Anna's blood. And they just, like, scream and fly away. I guess they have some sort of psychic connection to the other vampire. But, like, they don't explain that. They don't explain why they stop killing this woman. I Like, they're not even in the same place. Like, they're not in danger, even if they're sister wife did die it i don't know <laughs> yeah it, honestly it's asking too much of this movie to explain any of that yeah they're not gonna, uh, yeah later on th there is so much uh almost dying in this movie that it's pretty painful um and there's a lot of that in many action movies but this movie does so much of it that later on they write in a joke from Kate Beckinsale's character, just before she kills one of uh, Dracula's brides, uh, where she says, you know, if you weren't, something to the effect of, if you weren't just talking about it and you did it, then this wouldn't happen. And she stabs her. So it knows what it's doing. Um, it's just not fixing it. <laughs> exactly. Um, which I think is truly the most painful part. I'm going to speed run through the rest of the plot, if that's okay. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so they get back together. They find out Anna's brother, Velkin, is alive, but he's a werewolf. Of course, you saw that coming. Uh, and later on in the movie, they have to kill him because he's a werewolf, of course. It's very sad. Um, Dracula is the whole reason he funded Dr. Frankenstein's research into resurrection is because frankenstein's monster was not the end goal he was the key okay <laughs> dracula his main goal in this movie is to create an army of his offspring we <laughs> his offspring in this movie so they talk about it like so that's what happens when vampires breed instead of just like giving birth like humans would they make egg sacs and they hang them from, like, roofs and stuff. And then little... They look like gargoyles if gargoyles weren't made of stone. Ha and they're tiny. They're little, like, batlings, I'll call them. Hatch from the egg sacs and terrorize, like, the village. Um, but they never get born naturally because vampires are dead. Ergo, what they... Their offspring are also dead. And that's how they explain that. 
And so Frankenstein's monster is needed to power a machine that will cause electricity to shoot through all the egg sacs and bring the battlings to life. And that is his plan. That's his goal. And already, like, what is that? What is that? <laughs> what? I will say, here is the one rose I will give this movie. I like the design of the little baby bats. I do. They're cute. They, well, I, they're battling. I use that one. But I did like them. I thought they were gross. And, and I enjoyed them, even though we see them in, like, 20% lighting. Yeah. Well, why are they, why can't, why, okay, first of all, why can't they be undead? Why are they dead? Why can vampires even reproduce if they can only produce stillborns? And why is it like a whole nother creature? Like infinite questions about this plot. Um, yeah. Frankenstein's monster, like, I don't know why, but you need a, like, person. You need a human person to be ra- you know how they bring Frankenstein back to life. They like raise him through the roof on a like you know, bed he's tied to and then lightning strikes him and he comes to life, you know. It's like a gurney on a platform. Yeah, that that's the classic up. way to bring So basically this machine works. Lightning has to strike a human on that thing and then the electricity goes through them and into the machine and then the machine sends the electricity into the egg sex but like wh- why 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 is that how you power a machine why does it have to strike a living thing why can't it like just strike like a lightning rod or something like why do you have to strike frankenstein's monster why did you even make the monster like infinite questions about this ludicrous plot like what is going on i don't know and then on the other hand uh on the other side of this good versus evil um Anna and Van Helsing and Friar Carl are all trying to figure out how to kill Count Dracula because the Valerius family has tried everything you could possibly do to kill Dracula and none of it worked. They've burned him, they've thrown holy water on him, they've staked him, and it, it, he just can't die. He doesn't follow normal vampire rules, you could say. They don't explain why he's special. You can kill his wives those ways, and they do get killed slowly throughout the movie in those ways he somehow is immune to all that um he's like the super vampire i guess maybe he made maybe his deal with the devil he made was like you're also invincible uh but by the end of the movie we find out he has a cure to lycanthropy because the only thing that can kill him is a werewolf once again why that is or like you know, all the, it, that is all completely arbitrary. I <laughs> That's just how it went. You know, this plot is procedurally generated a good 50% of the time. Yeah. No, I, and it really does feel that way. It's just like, that's why I think watching this movie for me was so exhausting. It just felt like they were piling on. It's like they were adding to a fire that was already burning uncontrollably. Yeah. Stop feeding the fire. You already can't control it. That's, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. (laughs) Yeah, the plot ran away from them is really what it feels like. Um, The big finale, basically, when they kill Velkin Valerius, uh, he actually bites Gabriel Van Helsing before he dies. And so Van Helsing has been infected. He will also become a werewolf. But if he kills Dracula before the final stroke of midnight and gets the antidote, then he'll be fine. Um, The stroke of midnight thing, I think, is just because that's a fun trope. But, okay, they kept saying before the final stroke of midnight. What does that mean? Like, there's only one midnight. Or do they mean, like... 1201? Yeah, I was like, do they mean between the hours of, like, 12 o'clock and 1 a.m.? Like, what is the final stroke of... What does that mean? Uh, it The first stroke of midnight happens, and then they, you know, have basically that whole scene, that whole fight sequence or whatever, and then there's never a final stroke. I don't... Th- this time thing, this whole midnight, whatever, that is 
once again, arbitrary, doesn't make sense. Don't think about it. With I, Frankenstein, you could, like, okay, don't think about it to an extent. This movie, like, it's trying to tell a story. It's like Sherlock Holmes. It's like the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movie. Like, it's trying to have a plot. Like, it really is, but it's also, like, going nowhere and just adding random elements and, like, has no plot, basically. I, I wouldn't have described it any differently. Okay, yeah. I, I That's a specific... We can go into more specific scenes and stuff if you want, but, like, every fight sequence, every scene, pretty much, is just there to, like, be an interesting set piece and nothing really special about anything that happens in this movie. Uh, and I guess that's kind of why it was such a slog to watch for you, if I may put yeah. words in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and I felt like I already spoke to this. It it was like they just kept adding to something that they they had already oversaturated. I wish I enjoyed this movie because I am the market for this movie. I am a fan of the OG movie monsters and I want to see them get some cool modern big screen treatment and truly there is nothing like that um still to this day this came out in 2004 and i still don't feel that they've been done justice i think that's also what adds to my frustration about the movie (sighs) yeah and i like bad movies too like it could have been that and terrible and i still would have liked it but it's just so like convoluted to the point that it's like i don't you don't even care to follow it. You know if you do follow it, it's not going to make any sense. There's, you have zero investment in this movie and in any of the characters. And the stakes are so low. Like in that first fight with uh, Dracula's brides, like they really act like, oh, someone's almost going to get killed. They're almost going to get killed. But you know this fight has no stakes whatsoever because you know none of these characters are going to get killed. They have the whole rest of the movie to go. And by the end of the movie, you know that like, it doesn't, it, you're so tired, it doesn't matter. Um, do you remember what happens at the end of the movie, too? The big reveals and whatnot? I mean, I remember the, he kills the, the lady, he kills Anna. Yeah, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it was so dumb. It was and, so And, like, they didn't stupid. even show her wounds, it's like he tackled her too hard. Yeah, she was running at him with the antidote, and he was a werewolf, and he tackled her, and then she was like, lying there in the most beautiful position it's like that painting of ophelia uh and, and yeah <laughs> <laughs> she was dead i guess and then he like looks up at the sky and you see like like mufasa <laughs> her like spirit looking down from the clouds <laughs> and I, that was my well, favorite part of the movie was her spirit. well the only other thing i can think of that you might be referring to is uh the reveal of like van helsing killed dracula all those years ago yeah okay so yeah there's another whole which was yeah that's the thing we didn't even talk about that plot. yeah so van helsing has amnesia he has no memories basically and he's just he kills monsters and he doesn't know why uh and at the end of the movie dracula reveals that 400 years ago the reason he's undead is because he was murdered by van helsing and he offers to give Van Helsing his memory back. Van Helsing refuses and kills Dracula. For the second time. <laughs> yeah, for the second and final time. So this whole movie, Gabriel Van Helsing has no memory, no character, and no motivation. And they use that as a setup for a sequel. Something they reveal at the end of the movie is you might get to learn who this character is in the next movie and you so don't care you have this is why he's so hard to enjoy throughout the movie is like he's literally not a character it's just hugh jackman in clothes shooting things the okay so there was gonna be a sequel and it got permanently canceled (laughs) good which how bold of it was to be like you'll learn more about this character in the sequel this character who you don't know who doesn't exist it means that they'll write a character after the movie is made like what <laughs> in essence uh this is not a good movie and yeah. i paid money for it can you believe oh that? my god you did I'm i so rented sorry. it for three dollars on amazon so don't be like me do as i say not as i do 
don't watch this movie. Um, yeah. Once again, I feel like the last movie we covered that I said would be the worst one we've talked about thus far has been dethroned. We have a new champion of stink. And it's this movie right here. <laughs> Um, the, it did win an award for Stinker's Bad Movie Awards. <laughs> okay. uh, Richard Roxburgh, who plays Dracula, won Worst Male Fake Accent. It's equivalent to Tommy Wiseau. It, like, really is. I mean, I I, I uh, cringe at even calling it an accent. It was more like a, a voice. <laughs> yeah. How infinitely better would this movie have been? If they cast Tommy Wiseau, I'm not even joking. Like, he really would have brought more passion to this role than this man did, at least. Like, it really would have genuinely be a better movie. I would rather be living in that world. <laughs> I, that's a better world. That's such a better world. I, Frankenstein, like, I at least found enjoyment in it. I did enjoy watching it. This movie, I don't even know if I <laughs> could say that. No, I hated every minute. Yeah, I would. I hated I would, every Yeah. <laughs> You could probably take Stephen Summers to small claims court to get your three dollars back. You you have a legitimate case. God, I want him to buy me a beer <laughs> for watching this thing. Well, <laughs> thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I wish I could go back to my past self when I said we should watch this movie and stop myself from making <laughs> it ruined my week. Yeah, you're an alcoholic now. I am. I am. Here I go. All right, buddy. Well, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, actually. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for listening. Goodbye.